I was born and raised in a township called Soweto in South Africa. And when I visited my family in Muila village in the Limpopo province, it broke my heart to see people leave for cities. But I understand why they left. Unemployment is high there. Where out of those that stayed behind, seven out of 10 young people and women were without employment. But where there seemed to be hopelessness, I saw opportunity. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tabang Mabapa, and I'm the founder of Silukung Sadimilan SSD, which translates rich soil, a place where things grow. I'd like to share an experience that led to me becoming an entrepreneur. As a final year student in university, I was required to do work integrated learning in order for me to graduate and gain work experience. I did my work integrated learning at ABZ Holdings, a company that prepares young people to become active working citizens in their communities through their studied courses. Now what started out as a simple work experience unfolded into something magnificent as the tasks I was given at ABZ improved not only my working skills, but also my human qualities. I did a number of things at ABZ, ranging from strategic planning to community outreach. And it is through these experiences that I learned that there's an ample scope to improve one's ability, competence, and intelligence. I happen to be more interested in community outreach because I enjoy working with people a lot and because of the passion that I developed for agriculture, especially agro-processing, which I'll touch on. So my journey as an entrepreneur began after my time at ABZ, and it all started when I went to go volunteer to clean a community church that a friend of mine gave me crops to throw away. Now, I didn't throw them away. I put them in my bag, but didn't know what they were at the time. When I got home, I crushed the head of the crops and found these three brown attractive seeds inside. Now, out of curiosity, I began doing research on the seeds, and that's when I found out what they could produce. I found out that these were castor seeds and could produce castor oil. Now, after having gathered research on castor seeds and castor oil, I went on to approach a professor who specializes in chemical engineering at Wits University to help me extract the oil from the seeds. He agreed to help me produce some samples, but prior to mechanic extraction, I used to cook the seeds and crush them using a spoon. I called it manual extraction. I then went to visit my family in Muila village. Having the seeds with me, I coincidentally met a man who used to work at a castor farm back in the 50s and the 60s. The conversation that we had inspired me to do further research, but from a commercial perspective of the value of the castor plant. He went further to offer to teach me how to grow the seeds on non-arable land during winter and summer seasons, which I gladly accepted. I knew then that I had to do something with the knowledge that was imparted on me by both Dr. Ngazi, who's a chemical engineer, and Mr. Piri, who has vast experience in castor seed farming. Now, during my visit in Muila village, I noticed how unemployment breeds problems such as crime, especially amongst us young people. It destroys the fabric of our society as young people are denied the opportunity to become independent. The financial constraints that unemployment creates prevents us from enjoying a normal life. It leaves us in a limbo. I realized then that my village was and still is suffering from rural brain drain. And out of those that stayed behind, seven out of 10 young people and women were left without employment or any economic opportunities. But I also realized how the Limbopo province is graced with land and soil that can grow almost any seed, and how the people in Muila are well informed about agriculture and farming, which is actually what inspired me to start the company, SSD. 
Now, SSD is an organization that farms castor seeds and processes them into castor oil and biodiesel. Our business is primarily in the agricultural sector, yet plays a role in a number of industries, including energy. Now, today, in light of the crude oil crisis, there's a need for alternative fuels, and castor oil, in addition to its traditional uses, has become part of the biodiesel industry and could serve as an alternative to diesel fuel. Now, biodiesel is an alternative fuel that is similar to your conventional or fossil diesel, but it is clean and it is renewable. It can either be produced from vegetable oil, which is what we use as feedstock, animal fat, and even waste cooking oil, just to mention a few. Now, the benefit of producing biodiesel from castor oil is that it becomes a carbon neutral, meaning that it doesn't produce any net output of carbon dioxide because when the oil crop grows, when the castor seeds grow, they absorb the same amount of carbon dioxide they release when the fuel is combusted. Castor oil as biodiesel also has lubricating properties that can actually make your engine last longer. Now, the crude oil crisis has created new and profitable business opportunities for people like myself, as creating alternative forms of energy is not only good for preserving the environment, but also for increasing the job market. Now, SSD has the trust of the chief of Muila village, who has handed over land that is a size of a small town, a thousand hectares, for castor seed farming. We currently have 24 volunteers and 68, it's, it's 24 employees and 68 volunteers who are actually helping redefine agriculture and understand that it won't happen overnight. Now, what makes us stand out as a company is that we do our farming on non-arable land as oil seeds are perceived to pose a threat on the food security. We also produce a byproduct called custard cake, which is organic fertilizer that enhances the fertility of the soil. Custer cake has traces of zinc and copper, thus making it a balanced fertilizer. It also has traces and elements such as potassium and nitrogen, which are very vital to the proper growth of crops. Now, as a company, there's two goals that we're trying to achieve. The first one is an environmental one, whereby we are trying to contribute in decreasing the high dependency and reliance of crude oil. The second one is more social, whereby we are trying to actually reduce and address rural brain drain in Africa. I thank you.